Angela Silva here from my bathroom again. I'm gonna show you how I get my very naturally straight hair to big, beautiful, even waves. But before I start curling, I would be so grateful if you went down and hit that red subscribe button and ding that bell. Also give this video a thumbs up. And when you subscribe and hit that bell, it means you will be notified when I release a new video. So I'm using the Duval 32 millimeter curling wand and I have a coupon code for you to use. If you go to duval.com and you use code Angela70, you get 70% off your order, which makes this 32 millimeter curling wand only $28.50. Great deal. And I love this curling wand because it's tourmaline coated, just like the straightener, which makes my hair go through it very smooth. There's no like jerking it through, but it also uses infrared heat technology, which helps more evenly distribute the heat and reduce frizz. All right, let's go. I washed and blow dried my hair last night, so it's ready to go today. Gonna get all the tangles out, but there are not a lot. I have relatively thick hair, not super thick, pretty average hair, but it is so naturally straight. So I'm excited for this. All right, so now I'm going to section my hair. I'm going to use an alligator clip and just pull back the top layer, twist it up, rub it around, and clip. Okay, now I'm gonna separate the layer that's loose and spray it with hairspray. I do the bottom and the top. All right, we're gonna start on my left side and divide this into even sections. All right, got the wand, grab my section. I'm gonna curl away from my head. So we're just gonna, oh, let's separate that a little better. Grab it, rough it around, hold. Also, depending on when you are watching this video, you might be quarantined at home like me. That is one of the reasons <laughs> I was really excited to get this offer because I have not curled my hair in a long time. Fun fact, I've also not put makeup on since this quarantine began. And it's April 14th today. But like, why, you know? Okay, I always grab my curl to let it form before I release it. I love these big curls. Look how evenly that curled. Look at the evenness. I love it. Okay, next strand. Okay, I'm going to hold this one behind my head and wrap like this. frivolous is the word. I was a little conflicted about doing this video because this is, I don't know, a hard time in the world and this just seems kind of frivolous, like curling my hair. But then I thought I would much rather be stressed about things like burning my hand on a curling iron because I'm distracted by curling my hair, doing things that I normally do to distract myself and just keep things normal then spend all my time dwelling in stress and anxiety and uncertainty. I did go through that for the first two weeks. I was a mess. Let's look at this curl and I'll tell you why. Okay, I'm gonna grab it, hold it for a second. I'm gonna switch the glove to the other hand. And then release it. Other side. Okay, so we're gonna spray this first. The top layer, the bottom layer. Split it. Grab my wand. Again. 
gonna curl away from my head. So the first two weeks of this were just so hard for me to get into a groove of homeschooling. My husband's job was very uncertain because he's a dentist and dentistry is not a great career to have when there's a pandemic because you have to stick your fingers in people's mouths and they cough all over you. So a great way to get sick and to spread sickness, right? So there's just been, I mean, nobody knew kind of what to do as far as the pandemic was concerned. Do we close? Do we open? Do we, what do we do? So I think the uncertainty was the hardest part of the first two weeks for us. And then I just realized you have to embrace uncertainty. And when I adopted the motto of literally taking it one day at a time and making the goal for each day just to be peaceful and feed my kids, those are my goals. If the day was peaceful and my kids were fed, it was a good day, that was it. All right, let's release this curl and catch it. And I switched gloves and I'm now I'm, I switched sides so I'm catching it with the not protected hand and it's hot. But I love it. Okay, switching gloves back. My dogs are barking. Let me go shut them up. Okay, next round. All right, going behind my head. No barking. Sorry about the dog barking, now I can't stop him. He's a new dog. So he's the second shelter dog I've adopted in the last six months. I just can't help myself. He's a doodle mix though. Here's the thing about dogs and me. I love dogs and I've always loved dogs and my husband did not grow up with dogs. However, I came with one. Like we were a package deal when we got married, when we met. <clears throat> so she's always been part of the picture. Also my husband's allergic, but he kind of got used to her. He's fine. And then one day my daughter and I just like decided to stop by our local animal shelter and we saw Jack Jack. Here's Jack Jack. He's just this little shorty mix and he had been part of like a puppy mill situation and had been in a crate basically his first three years of life. He was just so timid and scared and he looked like a puppy, but he was not a puppy. Let's check this out. Great curl. Anyway, we couldn't not take Jack Jack home, right? We took Jack Jack home. He still doesn't like my husband. I think he has a thing about men. He's great with my kids, great with me. She's kind of a quirky little dog. He hoards socks. So, oh guys, I love these curls. All right, last strand down here. So, we got Jack Jack. Last strand on this bottom layer. I'm gonna do this one behind my head also. So the dog that I came with, Meg, is getting old. Her lifespan is eight to 10 years. She turns 10 in two weeks. And I thought, I, she's a big dog and I always, want needed to have a big dog and there's some i don't know where i heard this i heard that it's good to get a puppy before your older dog or while you have an older dog that can dominate it like they establish dominancy right an alpha dog to make that dog submissive and have a submissive personality so it's like let's find a puppy now well we, she's still she's still alive not it kind of sounds like we were trying to find her replacement, but not really. It's almost like I want a piece of her to live on by her influencing this puppy, right? So we just started looking at the shelter and puppies are hard to find at the shelter. They did have one. It was a Husky Great Pyrenees mix. It was the cutest puppy. And it was posted in the morning. The shelter didn't, doesn't open until noon. <clears throat> I got there at one and he was gone. And the shelter was like, people wait outside the door for puppies. And I was like, oh man, okay. And my husband was, and my husband was on the fence about a puppy, honestly, and another big dog that sheds, cause Meg sheds. And I was like, okay, well I'll keep watching and see what other puppies come when they come. We'll wait. Okay, guys. Jumping back. These curls are beautiful. They're uniform. I'm gonna spray them again underneath and the top. And I'm going to take down the upper layer. Hmm, I'm going to take down the whole thing, I think. I am not very regimented as far as like perfectly dividing out my hair. I'm just going to kind of grab what's not curled and curl it. 
Okay, I'm gonna finger brush it. <clears throat> it's already brushed. I'm gonna spray this side and underneath. Grab a front section and curl away from my face. Okay, so I begin stalking the Animal Shelter website and Facebook page again. And one day I see a dog called Rags posted. And Rags was, they said, a schnoodle, a schnauzer poodle mix. Standard poodle, so he's a big puppy, four months old. So my husband always said that he wished he would have gotten to have our dog that we've had a long time as a puppy. He wanted the puppy ears. Now that he's come around to dogs, he's like, I want a puppy. And I was like, oh, but puppies are a pain. I'm kind of over puppies. Um, so this dog, four months old, so puppy, and a doodle mix, which is hypoallergenic, they say, right? So I was like, oh my gosh, going to the shelter. I made sure to call when I was on my way to make sure he was still there, and he was. I had my kids with me, but he was at work. So, let's hold this. I get to the shelter and Rags, that's not his name now, who is still there, and I bring him out to the play yard and he immediately just like wraps his paw around my leg, just like snuggle. He has the goofiest puppy personality. He's playful, but he's sweet, very sweet. And they told me the story that a man brought him in. Oh my gosh, you guys, did you see that girl though? Did you see that? Look at it, Pam. I'm going to alternate between grabbing a piece at the top and then grabbing a piece underneath. I'm going to spray a little bit. Okay. So, Rags does great. He does great with my kids. The shelter tells me, yeah, we've been trying to find his owner because he's, he's like a $1,200 dog. People don't just drop, like, drop them off. He said, a man brought in Rags and had found him himself on his property and held him for two weeks and tried to find the owner himself and then couldn't, so brought him to the shelter. The shelter was skeptical. They said, people don't just like keep a dog for two weeks. As soon as you find a dog, you call the shelter, you put up flyers, you post on Facebook. So they were skeptical. They said, a lot of times people will say that when they're dropping off their own dog. And I was like, well, that's devastating. So. They were like, yeah, he's like great, great health. He's just a scrappy, cute little puppy. And I was like, we'll take him. And we're changing the name to Hank. So we got Hank. However, while I was walking out of the shelter, a man walks in and he says, are you adopting that dog? And I said, yeah, I just did. Like they put the microchip in my name and everything. And he goes, oh, and he like teared up. And he's like, I was coming to, t that's, I brought that dog in. And I was like, their story was true. And he said he had, like three acres on the outside of town and just like saw that dog walking around his property. And he was like, it was so strange. I think someone must've dropped him off because how would he get out there? And I was like, okay. And he goes, yeah, he, I got four chihuahuas and he hangs out with them and he follows me down to the creek. And, but um, I decided to try to find his owner and the shelter tried and they couldn't. And he was like, well, I travel for work and I have four chihuahuas, so you take him. Like he was gonna come back and adopt him. I was, I was so torn. I'm still torn about it because I was like, oh my gosh, I just like, I had my kids with me. We just adopted a dog, gave him a name, but this guy didn't have kids or he might have, but he, they were older. He just lived with his wife and four chihuahuas, but he uh, traveled a lot for work, I guess. And she worked full time. And I was like, well, I work from home and little kids, I got other dogs. He's like, oh yeah, that's better. And I had a feeling that, you know, I brought him to the shelter that could happen. So anyway, that is the story of Hank. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hank has had a lot of health issues since we got him. <clears throat> right off the bat, he had kennel cough. Um, right after you get a dog from the shelter, the shelter obviously has a lot of animals, and they do their best, vaccinate them, and take care of them there, but my shelter says, take him to the vet, get him established at the vet, and he still needed some vaccine since he's a puppy, but he had a terrible cough already. He didn't in the shelter, but like that night he developed it. And so I took him to the vet the next day and they said, oh yeah, kennel cough, we're gonna hold off on his vaccines because he needs an antibiotic, it was pretty bad. 
um, and a steroid because he was he had thrown up. He was not doing well. So that went on for a week of that, those medications, and then a week later his cough was still really bad. And I am really good about medication on time, twice a day, doing what he had to do, giving him a special food and everything. I never had a dog get sick like this, and he still wasn't better. His cough was not good. He was not eating very much compared to what he should have been eating, and I just had a bad feeling. So I just called the vet and I said, listen, I don't think he's getting better. I, we need to give him a new antibiotic or try something else. They were like, all right, bring him in. And we brought him in and we listened to his lungs and they were like, yep, he has pneumonia. I was like, pneumonia? All right, I'm gonna separate this into two last sections. away from my head. Anyway, so he said, yes, his kennel cough turned into pneumonia. Um, we're going to switch his antibiotic and give him a probiotic because the antibiotic or the steroid, I don't know, he had a, I don't know, he had three different medications. One was a probiotic because one of them upset his stomach and he needed to basically rest in his crate nonstop. That was part of the problem with the kennel cough is he's running around with my kids and other dogs and not getting the rest he needed. We have a big fenced backyard, so he had a great little life, but he needed to be crated a little longer. Unfortunately, they think, yeah, he got all this from the kennel, though, the animal shelter. So it was really hard to keep a puppy that we just got in a crate for two weeks. Basically, we just let him out like five times a day, go to the bathroom, and then he had to lay there. It was really hard, but he got better until I was walking him to the dock in our neighborhood. We live in a coastal community, and I was taking him for a walk, and he squatted to go to the bathroom. And I got my doggy bag ready to pick it up, but it was just blood, just a pool of blood. Now this was like two weeks after the pneumonia, which the pneumonia had, two weeks since the pneumonia had cleared up. And the vet has since closed. This was post quarantine actually. This happened not that long ago, two weeks ago. So, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab this piece. <clears throat> so I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never had a dog get be so sick and have such issues. And I thought, what could this be? Did he eat something? He's a puppy and the kids bring toys in the yard and what could this be? This is bad. And before I could get him, to, I called the vet. No, this was on a Sunday. I called the vet and they said, just keep an eye on him. He might not need, you don't need to come in like emergency Sunday withhold his food, bring him in tomorrow. So he did fine the rest of the night. He would like strain to go to the bathroom, but like nothing would happen. It just looked like he was constipated. Sorry for the TMI. It was very stressful. And so the next day I take him to the vet. Oh my gosh, this one won't stay. Okay, take him to the vet. I also like real quick that this cord is a 360 swivel cord. So all this maneuvering, the cord's not getting wrapped around, like, you know what I mean, like shortening and being tugged. Okay, take him to the vet. They, I just have to drop him off, because it's quarantine. So they're meeting people at their cars, and then taking the dog inside, and then they're like, we'll call you and you can come back. And I was like, okay, I'm so worried. They do an x-ray, there he's barking, and they don't see a blockage. And they're like, but well, we're gonna send it to a radiologist just to double check to make sure there's no for foreign object. But they, they do see something like an enlargement or inflammation in his upper digestive tract. So they sent it to the radiologist who says no. But at the same time, they were running a fecal sample and he had hookworms, bad hookworms. Now he'd never been on a heartworm or any type of worm medication because of his other, he was always on these other medications. I guess the shelter hadn't given it to him, but he likely had it ever since the shelter and they were just now flaring up. They weren't as bad as they can get, I guess, but that's what they were. And it was so sad. Okay, done with this side. <laughs> I just love how I'm bouncing back and forth between these stories. Might drive me so I'm crazy. All right, done with this side. Sorry, I have to pause the story so often, but showing you the curls. I love them. Let's do this side. I always part on my right side, so there's more hair on this side. This side won't take as long. All right, glove, switching hands. Pulling this hair, grabbing my first section, and spraying. Okay, and 
curling away from my head. So, hookworms, not great. They give us heart guard, which is what you give your dogs every month for heartworm preventative. It prevents all worms, but this is what's scary. The doctor was like, um, hookworms live in the yard, your other dogs get them, you can get them. They can spread to humans. Like if your kids run around the backyard with bare feet, they could get them and get up under your skin. And he was like, basically like any dogs in your neighborhood who go for a walk and do their business on a walk, like could get transmitted to dogs who aren't taking heart, like worm, moment monthly heartworm stuff. And I was like, oh wow, that's a really good thing to know. I just couldn't believe all this was happening to my dog. Like I've had my one dog for 10 years and she's like never had health problems. So, the dewormer process is just like a powder on his food for three days and then an antibiotic for 10 days that also helps with the deworming and just kind of keep an eye on him. And all is well. Normal eating, normal bathroom, normal everything. And yeah, everything I think is fine with Hank now. All his health problems have cleared up, thankfully. He's a pretty normal puppy. He jumps and runs and chews and bites and all of the things. But he's being trained. We're training him because he's the puppy that my husband always wanted. And he's very much a puppy, but he's also very sweet. He's very, <clears throat> he's got like that golden retriever disposition where he just wants to be with his people. He will just lay under my feet wherever I am, follow me around. So the dog I've had this whole time is an Akbosh which have shepherd personalities. So she likes to guard. She just patrols the perimeter of our house. She's very territorial. Just, that's just her nature. The little dog is very little dogish. He's kind of a jerk, but he has a lot of baggage. So he deserves to have all of his quirks and anxiety, but he loves me more than anyone. He just wants to follow me around. He's the most loyal little guy to me. And then this dog is just like your stereotypical, like derpy, goofy family dog who just runs around with the kids. He just lives for people. And other dogs, he loves them so much. When we walk him, if we approach a family that's walking a dog, he immediately just like turns around and walks the other way because he's nervous. But then when we approach them, he just sniffs and wags his tail and he just doesn't have a territorial bone in his body. He's just goofy and submissive. Our dog definitely did that, put him in his place and he is very submissive. Even our little dog has not submitted to him. Like, Hank is the bottom of the totem pole here. So anyway, we are a three dog family now. And that is um, the story of my shelter dogs. And I'm not allowed to go to the shelter anymore or look at the websites because it's just so hard. And we have a fenced backyard, so I'm always like, oh, we could give them a home, but no. All right, this is the last curl. So in my last video, uh, it was a, uh, Makeup tutorial, maybe? I can't remember. Oh no, it was my blow dryer tutorial. Was it? I don't remember. I did a tutorial not long ago and I asked. It's so awkward to just do makeup like in silence or do hair in silence. Um, I don't like stock music and I don't want to pay royalties for popular music. So do you guys mind if I just talk? And I got comments were like, yeah, talk, tell us about yourself. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna shake out. I'm gonna take this glove off now. I'm going to kind of run my fingers through the curls and pull them apart manually like that. Um, you guys, I love these curls. All right guys, this is the final product. I love them. They're light and even, and I can just tussle my hair all day. I didn't use a ton of hairspray compared to my old um, curling wand, and I love that. It doesn't feel like it's weighted down with tons of hairspray. Remember, you can get your own 32 millimeter. That's the thicker barrel from Duval.com and use code Angela70 for a discount. The details are also in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you for supporting me as I adopt all of the shelter dogs. Um, if you have any other life stories you want to hear about, let me know and I can uh, narrate my next video and let you know a little bit more about me. Thank you for subscribing and giving me all the likes and all the little bell dings and I will see you in my next video.